Uh, okay, agricultural revolution, quickly go through this. The agricultural revolution will be in the 1700s, mainly in Britain. We'll see a rapid, uh, or we'll see an increase in agricultural production. Once again, this is a term given by historians um, that say, wow, there's this big change. Does it happen in a moment? Does it happen in a year? No, but it's a gradual change over time that many historians feel is significant enough to call it agricultural revolution. One of the things that's happening as a part of this is the enclosure movement. The enclosure movement is uh, parliament allowing for the sale of these common lands. Okay, the commons will be enclosed. It will be privatized. See you later. Thank you. Rich landowners will be buying these lands, and importantly, they'll have more land with which to experiment. And so they will try all sorts of new agricultural techniques on these lands uh, that will result in higher agricultural yields and more agricultural production. The agricultural revolution will also not just result in landowners having more land with which they can experiment and, and develop more agricultural production. But it will also mean that the people that were reliant on the commons, those poor peasants that were reliant on the commons, will have to find other places for, to make a livelihood. So they will either have to work for those landowners, or they'll have to move. And many will end up moving to cities, or will end up looking for jobs elsewhere, such as in new factories that we'll see by the end of the 18th century. Now, what are the new techniques that have come about during the agricultural revolution that help result in higher agricultural yields or, or agricultural production? Uh, well, for one, we see new crops are introduced. Uh, we already mentioned the tomato. Another example is the turnip. Um, these crops are used not just for human consumption, but these crops are also used for livestock consumption. So cattle and pigs will be able to eat these things. And so we'll see an increase in livestock. So new food, increase in livestock. What else will we see? We'll see the use of manure to fertilize the land. That's another new technique. We'll also see the new tools being used. New tools will be used, for example, the seed driller. We'll put seeds down in the ground instead of just putting them uh, over uh, on the surface, which will result in more food. Or heavier plows will be developed that will churn up the soil even more, will churn up the soil well, that will result in higher agricultural production. So new tools are going to be used. A new uh, farming system known as crop rotation will be developed. Crop rotation will replace the three field system or the two field system. And so in the old system, the three field system for example, there were three fields and in any given year, there were two that were being used and one that lay fallow because that would have to regain nutrients in that year off. But crop rotation means that you're going to have three fields and you're going to plant different things on those different fields. And so no land will lay fallow at, in any given year. And by rotating the crops, certain crops will replenish the soil with nutrients and therefore will be, um, uh, will be just as effective as lay, having the soil lay fallow. And you can see just looking at that, that there's a third more land now that can be used for producing things. So that's important as well. And so the overall result of the agricultural revolution, and the reason why it's important, is because you're going to have more food being produced with fewer workers needed to produce it. This is what we call more efficient production. More food with fewer workers needed to produce it. 
And the people that are growing those food, that, that food, they're going to be making a lot of money because they'll be able to produce more food. And so there's going to be this accumulation of capital in Europe, in Britain. Accumulation of capital amongst landowners because they'll be making all this money off of this food. An accumulation of capital off merchants, from merchants that will be trading overseas and making money in the colonies, making money in the slave trade and this overseas trade. And so Britain will see a, a large amount of capital and also will have the laborers available that will make possible the Industrial Revolution, which will then begin in the late 18th century. And there's some major things here, right? The spinning jenny by Hargreaves, the water frame by Richard Arkwright. These are inventions in the 18th century that allow for the more effective or more efficient production of cotton, thread, and uh, of textile, namely cotton textiles. And where is this cotton coming from? It's coming from the colonies. And then finally, the steam engine, which is perfected by James Watt in the late 1700s. The steam engine will then allow for industrialization to happen. It will power factories. It will be put on trains. And so this steam engine will be that key invention that will uh, uh, allow the Industrial Revolution to commence. And the first sector that is, of course, undergoing industrialization is the textile industry, cotton textiles, which will be mass manufactured in these factories using these machines. <laughs>